All right. All right, man. What is up? Episode 28, Planet Xbox Podcast, and this is a special edition. Y'all going to wish I had some questions in the Patreon um, because uh, we got, we, we, we here, man. We, we here, Attic Smooth and Lord Cognito. Uh, Iron Lord's podcast, man. What's up, man? How you doing? Fair, fresh off that um, Hennessy margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> fresh off that BBQ. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see you, good Polly, and be in the room. I think, damn, I'm trying to remember the last time I was on. That's why it's been a minute. I, it's I, been I, a minute since well, Normally, I stay away from the, the IOP people because mm. I feel like it's just repeating IOP conversations. Right. Uh, but I took King, uh, I told uh smooth i was like okay maybe it's time for me to reach in that yeah, and i know yeah. you're mad busy so yeah. uh but the good thing is like i know i, I could pull the man just to do me a favor card <laughs> <laughs> i got you you'll do this for no one but family you know what I'm saying? Nah, it's cool though to be up in the realm of planet xbox moving you doing your thing weapon will salute so yeah man i'm, I'm here excited we got we got a lot to talk about it seems man. yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> man um Ooh, i mean it's always good news. Always good, Cognito. Uh, we got to hang out, Cognito Attic. We went to BBQs, had some some good some good wings, some good uh, ribs, and I, I'll be back good drinks um, in March. Yeah, I see he liked that drink though. Smooth. Yeah, you see, I, I didn't complain <laughs> about that that, that, that BBQ. It, was, it, it tasted good, like it did. It tasted Ooh, good. It, it was real good, Texas man. Size, extra shot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cognito was like, "Yo, why is my drink going down?" <laughs> For every you second, because <laughs> I never that was some new joint. They had the patrol, yeah, margarita <laughs> drink with a legit patrol bottle. So I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm like, I'm gonna get a little buzz. But I'm like, yo, this drink is not going down because <laughs> the, the body was emptying, emptying into it while yeah. I'm trying to get the main part of the drink down. It was the funniest thing ever. I was, I was, I thought I was really drunk. I was like, yo, I'm not tripping. <laughs> no, that'd be a nice, a nice never ending loop of a drink because that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, just crazy. Yeah. But always good time. Always good time. Looking forward to do that again. Um, always yeah. good hanging uh, out with the lords in person. So you know, shout out to Cognito Attic King. Um, um, uh, looking forward to kicking, connecting with King again. He's always a good time. Uh, oh, so Plan Xbox Podcast. Before we get into the meat and potatoes and the trouble, uh, let's get to you know, Cognito. I, I have to start with you, man, because I saw you posted something that had me intrigued. So. Uh, I saw a, a, a screenshot for Tekken 8 that said a thousand out of a thousand. What? Yeah, I, you know, I don't even. What's funny is me and you just had that conversation <laughs> about achievement score. We talking about it. Yeah. And I haven't, bro, I haven't done that in a minute. So I'm sitting there and I'm playing the game. I do the story mode and I knock out some stuff. Then I, I do a little of the online, the arcade quest mode. And I knock out some stuff. By the time I looked at it, I'm like, damn, I'm at like 600 gamer score already. So I'm like, let's see what I got to do. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, this ain't even that crazy. I mean, now granted, some of that was going online. They basically yeah. want you to do all different aspects again. But it's not that bad. So I was like, I got to talk to Smooth. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm about to say, that might be worth a cop for that alone. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you at minimum could get 600, you know, just doing the main okay. story, complete the quest, yeah. complete the arcade quest. You gonna get the majority of these joints, and then they want you to like to do all the character episodes, the endings for each individual character. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that may take a little while. So I would say, you know, like a little two day. Two I'm about day to say blaze. the game just came out. I admit that. How long did it take you to 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 get through that? No, but oh, I, I, went, that I went extra hard though. <laughs> like Tekken is Tekken is life for me. So it yeah. may be longer for other people, and plus I'm. You know, I'm good. So yeah. getting the online wins, getting the online ranking stuff, that wasn't hard. But for, for the bulk of the achievements, really, is not online stuff. But yeah, Especially man. you playing that day one where everyone's noobs. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was Whatever I had to do, I had to, I had to bully people on the playground, whatever we got. To, <laughs> I got to get it up. But yeah, nah, that joint is not that bad. It's not that mm-hmm. bad. If you're looking for and first of all, the game is fire, kid. Yeah. Like, the game, you want to talk about Unreal Engine 5. You want to talk about the best looking graphical fidelity fighting game you ever see it's not even close you know what i'm saying now i get it you know mortal kombat story will still probably be the top but they finally have like their own implemented avenger style story so yeah. it's fine man. i really i really like tekken 8 this year yeah i heard your host uh soliloquy on um tekken 8 and i'm trying to think if it was i think it was i don't know if it was ilp or if it was uh the duke 
uh, mm-hmm. but you kind of went in in of like how the game and and I was like, he's making this game sound appetizing as all hell, and I don't even like fighting games. And I'm like, I, I, I really don't like. I Mortal Kombat. I mean, Attic had access to it, so that's why I, I you know, I just like I might at least earn me some achievements through the story. I know I can complete that, but I ain't messing with that online. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. I'm gonna tell you right now, like for new players, I know yeah. Attic ain't had a good experience, but I didn't get a chance to watch his stream. So I was max. So I'd have been in his stream helping him because he didn't have a, a great. I'm yeah, but basically what I was saying is this. Yeah, please. But when they please, gave it to you on PlayStation, though, right? Oh. Um, that's probably it, man. You probably need, you need that on Xbox. No, just yeah. like to me when I was playing Tekken, I don't like, like I kind of like fighting games. It's a little bit more fast paced, and I'm used mm-hmm. to like the more combat speed. And mm-hmm. I felt like it was like a lot slower. Tekken was like interesting. It's because they they want you to like more combat. I feel like you push three buttons, you've done four. Four or five combos threw someone against the wall. Taking it wasn't cool that way. Special like, style. You got to put it on special style. Play special style. So like, you trying to be nice out the jump and know all the advanced just, stuff. I wasn't. I wasn't enjoying my experience because it's just like I guess it's because I was so I'm so used to like the more combat. Yeah. Feel. Look at that. What it is, Tekken is always character driven. You got to pick a character that you kind of flow with that feels good. You know, obviously, you play story, you're kind of stuck with Jin. So if you don't know anything about Jin, it's going to feel na- like I, I'm not even a Jin main and it felt weird at first. So what I always tell people, put it on special style mode, which again has each button assigned to special moves, low like moves, special style moves. Yeah, special style. They didn't get a feel of the game. They even, even teach you the combos for free. And then you get rocking, you know what I'm saying? Then you open it up. Then you go to arcade quest mode, where that's where they teach you to get. You make your little avatar, you in the arcade, they showing you little basics. Like, the game has the best onboarding for people who do not know how to play fighting games. So that that's the most. So next time, do the Attic Arena stream. I'm going to be up in there, and we're going to do it right. We're going to get you the proper Tekken introduction. But, kid, yeah, this is the one. If any... And then the go- whole ghost battle system with downloading the gu- the ghosts and being able to practice and it's next level. They they really changing the game with this one. Okay, all right, definitely. So now that you wrapped up Tekken Eight, is there anything else you playing? Yeah, I've been on that uh, Infinite Wealth now. I'm on all that okay. Yakuza joint. So uh, Ichiban in Hawaii. Game start off a little slow. Game start off a little slow. I-, I would not advise this game if you did not play Like a Dragon, the other one. Okay. Because it's like literally right after, and they really doing a lot of catching you up with what's been going on in the character's life in the first chapter and a yeah, half. A lot of the game is strictly just learning the, the concepts. If you didn't play the first one, the like it's... It's doable for me and Carl because we played like a dragon. Every area is is places like in like a dragon. So it felt like sure this is slow, but it's really just recapping between the first and second one with the like a dragon and infinite. But if you yeah. didn't play that, you just playing a bunch of fluff and you don't know what the hell's going. Yeah, you be like, oh, they just talking a lot, or they just this dude's a goof. What's going on? You know what I'm saying, kind of thing. But once you get to Hawaii, I think it's by the end of chapter two to chapter three. The reason why he's in Hawaii, what's going on, and then linking up with other characters. Yo, the story is fire. I'm loving it. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, man, I, I highly recommend. Highly recommend Infinite Wealth. But again, if you never played first like a dragon, play that for I think it's still in Game Pass. I think still it's still in, still game, in pass. game Pass. I had re-downloaded yeah. it uh because I was getting and I was liking the well, previous. I own it, so you wouldn't know yeah. how to Infinite. work it anyways. Um so I'm I'm gonna what happened was I, I was interchange I was back and forth between RE4 and um and like a dragon, but then I got access to this the game we were talking about before we, you know, started recording, and that's been like consuming my time because I think we got a hit coming up um yeah. it, which is uh but once i wrap up with that i w- i'm trying to think is like do i resume with resident evil then you got things like suicide squad that's you know taking off tekken obviously i want to d- dabble into that so i'm trying to figure out where do i uh, sh- uh strike next while the you know cooking is good you know what i mean especially yeah. tekken i don't want to get too far behind and then when all the noobs have kind of like kind of gotten decent <laughs> Mm-hmm. Cause I gotta no, I try to get those uh, cheap online achievements too. So oh, yeah, I never... bro, it's easy. Let me know. We set the player rule. I got you. <laughs> Red hit me. He's like, "Yo, I need this shit." <laughs> I said, "All right, bro. We gotta hit it around the same time." So yeah, yeah I got you, bro. Got you. Oh, that's awesome. nothing. I, uh, mm-hmm. You know, because I've been playing a lot of Power and I've been getting like oh, a I lot need of that. Yep. I need that. Yeah, yeah I need I've that. Been, when, I've when been playing go, a lot of go. the in-game content, so I'm mm-hmm. like working my way and getting the legendaries. I've been fighting Ooh. some of them. And and they're they're OP. 
So what's crazy is you can drop pals on here and you when uh, you could take people with you to the boss fights. Mm. And every achievement is either get the pals up to 80 pals or beat all the boss fights. You have all of them. Well, what are we and going through? I, I, what's, I got you 300 gamer score in like 20 minutes. Like, yes. Woo! Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm like, I'm to a degree. I, now I, I'm pretty sure I can get you the rest. The pals I have now are ridiculous. Like, mm. Yeah, Attic has a whole freaking nation. It's like I won't play Power World again on my own server. I'm only playing on his because that's what I got. I got. All this I'm stuff. coming over there when I'm getting the invite. Uh, I was like, yo, know, I was like, I cannot play. I was like, it, it, I don't know how people find the time and like to do all this stuff. That this dude got all his Pokemon pals working like slaves, making Pokeballs, making meals, making beds, oh, that's making nothing. tools. I, I I'm like, bigger, what? I <laughs> built a bigger conveyor belt. So they can work more. <laughs> dudes, dudes, we helping them. We helping the pals work. One gets tired, like All right, I gotta go eat. Walks away, go eat, come back and start doing his job again. I'm like, that's kind of sick. Even though I don't, I, you you can build a monitoring stand, and they can't eat. Chill. Like if you put a monitoring stand up, you can make the setting to where it works super hard, and if they don't eat, they just sit there. Well, it might be a glitch, but the, on my end, they might have been eating because I don't really pay attention to them like that. I kid you not. If I don't even worry about like depression or weak or weakness or weakened, if they get depression, weakened or anything, I just replace them. Like, <laughs> what do you mean replace? You kill them? You know, you find you just no, catch I just a new one. Replace them with another one that looks just like them because I got like thirty. Where of them. the old like, one go? Where the one that wasn't produced? What there happens then? To never be seen again. When like, you lock up in the box, you don't. You don't work. You don't get you don't get play. You sit there. <laughs> yeah, like um, yeah, right here. And that's the thing is, see, I enjoy the in game stuff. Like when it's already done for me, I don't want to set all mm. that stuff up. That's the thing. Like when I was I like, oh, this is impressive, Attic. But I don't want to yeah. be the one put setting that up Gave because it looks like a bunch of hard work. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the survival games, right? That's the yeah. survival game aspect of it. Now I feel yeah. you. Uh man, but yeah, so Power World is coming in hot. You know, they're uh I know PC version was getting all the love with all like what they were announcing every day. They were announcing another new million. Finally, Xbox came out. They haven't with, did that since I left New York. You realize that? What uh announced the uh, another uh, milestone? Milestone. Mm -hmm. Well, the next milestone they ended up announcing was the Xbox milestone with seven million yeah. players uh, on Game Pass, I believe. And Ooh. uh the Piscatella just posted something about maybe 45 minutes ago, uh saying okay. that Power World is like you know beating out Fortnite in playtime on Xbox. What? Yeah. Um wow. Yeah, average uh, three hours per session. Um so yeah, it, it is is going crazy. Xbox, if they were smart, they should do a PUBG and <laughs> put Power World marketing on the box on, on yeah. the box of Xbox Series S's and whatnot and, and sell mm -hmm. them. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. We got a lot to talk about uh regarding um you know Xbox and stuff. So we you know covered Tekken 8 in his glorious and uh, gloriousness, and I'm gonna you know definitely try to uh tackle that. Suicide Squad was another game that i didn't you know jump on day one i've been watching but you know i have spoken publicly maybe two weeks ago or maybe was it i don't know if it was last episode attic or the week before that. remember you you asked me what i think suicide squad will get i said it's gonna get a 60 do, do you recall it that I didn't it got a 60 oh, wow. on metacritic it's wow. like a 61 a 60 like not like a wow. legit 60. yeah yeah like a 60. wow yeah. Yeah, I'm right so, now. that's crazy but but remember that conversation where right? and i was like it's gonna get a 60 because the their media already has it out for the game, right? I was like, the whatever Destin and IGN did, like, you know, what's gonna happen? Either everybody gonna come in defense of the game, or mm. the industry's gonna come in defense of themselves and slaughter the game, and it's gonna be up to the uh the, the audience, the consumers to really big up the game. And that's pretty much mm. what's happening. If you know the user score, uh Steam score and everything, it's popular amongst users, actual gamers, but it's mm. unpopular amongst journals. So mm. you're looking at a bad rate, and, and, and Suicide Squad saw that. The, the I mean, w, WB Rocksteady they saw that coming. That's why they did that pivot and said F embargo. <laughs> like everybody just gonna have go. to uh, uh, let it go. And and the thing is, stuff like that has huge ramifications on games. Uh, people yeah. try to downplay 
review scores. They really try to downplay the whole review scores. And people get mad at me, like, oh, kiss me, you baby, you got mental issues and stuff like that. When I'm <laughs> complaining about Starfield and Halo and Gears and all that stuff, and these IGNs and GameSpots giving them like sevens and sixes and like low, giving these games low scores for like no realistic reason. I, I, I think games being unfairly judged. And what I think Rocksteady did was put journalists in a, a, a curious situation. Show, mm. pretty much show them for what they are and that's being uh grifter grifters and clout chasers because that's exactly because the thing is like i'm going i'm all right you know what you know you everybody's go, gonna have at it at the same time what well, how y'all gonna treat my game because you're gonna see it's gonna be something polarizing and it, it is polarizing now everybody is finally causing out because ign gave it a five a five out of ten mm. I, I wasn't feeling the wow. game, but I didn't look at it as a five. I just like, this mm. is going to be an average game. It's just that I probably won't rock with it because I'm I'm just not feeling, I'm not in this mood right now, right? So I, I'm like, if this gets to like a seven or eight, I could respect it, but it'll be one of those sevens or eight that I'll probably enjoy later, right? Something like how Gotham Knights did. I think Gotham Knights, well, did it land at around the 70s or something like that? I don't know where it landed, yeah. but it was like, I wasn't really feeling Gotham Knights, but I could respect if it got like decent scores. Mm -hmm. IGN gives it a five what two months after they said we played two hours of uh suicide squad and we didn't like it or something like that right that's what that's what really started this whole thing so i want to and now the thing is is that the whole beef between the industry or the journals versus rocksteady has mm. literally worked backwards like how uh Hogwarts Legacy. Everybody want to go and boycott. Oh, you, you boycott said. the game. Right. What happens? It works backwards, and then it gets support because nobody. If you don't have a legit reason to do it, then you're gonna. It's gonna work against it, and then the game's gonna be successful, uh, mm. in spite of the of the cause. So mm. I just want to know if you guys have been peeping game on uh, Suicide Squad. It's finally out. People are playing it. People are beating it. Actually, IGN actually spoiled uh, the ending. Um, they posted a spoiler. Really? Yeah. Um, out it really posted it like as if like okay. Okay, this is what we doing now. Um, wow. So I just wanted to know if you guys have been uh, like following the discourse regards Suicide mm -hmm. Squad. What you think of the game? If you played it, if there's something you're interested in, and and how should publishers be moving with these review scores, know, knowing the impact it now currently has? No, nah, that's real. Um, I haven't played the game, um, so I can't go crazy as far as if the game is officially trash or not. But you know, I will say my editor. Um, and she Mahmoud, he he played. He went extra hard for. It. He's like, oh, I don't know what everybody's talking about. I absolutely love it. We were trying to get a review, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? So now, as far as the discourse, right? So the way I understand it is that you know there was like an alpha in a, uh, uh, a like a presentation beta for like a specific event, and then there was like an alpha that other people had. And what I heard is people really liked the alpha, and people were saying that was good. And then what I guess other creators saw or other outlets saw was this kind of vertical slice that maybe wasn't as good the way that it was, was displayed. So if that's the case, okay, yeah, I understand one part. But the other thing is kind of what you said, which is very true in reference to the power of review scores, the power of, you know, giving your impression in the title or, or, or going, you know, extra hard on something. It does have that effect. We've seen proof of like companies that literally bonuses and things are tied to metacritic score you know we've seen stuff in the past where it's like you know a negative review for one of the biggest outlets can tank you and here's the thing no one i've always said me and me and attic always talk about this no one in my opinion is promised or entitled to a review code that's just my opinion no matter how big an outlet you are a publisher has the right to say who he wants to give it out to it's you're not guaranteed i think the issue comes down to people are feeling because certain outlets don't get these codes right i think we've seen an example some people felt this example happened with starfield that th they didn't get a code and now all of a sudden it's like yeah retribution i'm just telling i'm not saying they definitely do it but that's the feeling the feeling is well because we didn't get it you know, which was something we're used I mean, to getting. You, yeah. I interrupt you real quick. Yeah, I, please. I'm going to say it, it's like that. I, I, and mm -hmm. I do feel like some of these media people, the moment you don't give them a code, it just ironically, now the game gets like a mad low rating. Like, look, I'm not right. saying Suicide Squad is even a five or a six because I that game never really appealed to me. I do right. think the story looks phenomenal. Like, I, I will admit on right. that part. But mm -hmm. as far as like the game itself, it, it is 
to me, it's crazy that when a game doesn't get like a huge portion of, uh, you know, if the if the outlet doesn't get the review code, it does mm. seem like they take it on in the game. Right. Like, it, it, we yeah. saw with Starfield. Ironically, a lot of the Eastern outlets like uh, Digital mm. Foundry, none of them got review codes right there off the gate. And they mm. all ironically gave Starfield a 6 out of 10. Right. The publisher has the right again, to, to give and distribute the codes as they see fit. And let's just forget, let's just get to it, right? From a business standpoint, if you think that someone is going to negatively destroy your game, does it make business sense <laughs> to, to give that person the first access to something? Or we've, I've seen, I, I've seen, a, a, I've seen examples where certain publishers are looking at how they've been treated in the past. Yeah. And they're going like, look, not only did you di say that something was bad about the game, you disrespected the developer. You say, yo, what the hell are you doing? It's the worst thing. You know, why was this? I've seen that. Con and these guys are keeping receipts. So if they're keeping receipts and then it's time for their new game to come out, it doesn't make business sense to give it to a person that you know is going to necessarily trash your game. Like it can affect sales. It can affect engagement. It affects the marketing. It's a big deal. So people like some people will then push back and say, well, Cog, you know, well, you're picking and choosing. Here's the thing. I mean, I mean they're picking and choosing. That's the reality. Yeah. And you got to do what's best for your game. And then ultimately, when the, the, the big outlet does get it, they're going to review it. So I think what's happening right now, we're in a push-pull situation where developers are actually looking, I mean, publishers are looking at who they are giving things to. And I think also this is a concerted thing by games, established journalism to say, hey, we don't like what you're doing to us. Yeah. We feel we should be getting these codes. And, and you're seeing them outcry publicly like, hey, we didn't receive the review code. You know what I'm saying? My standpoint as an independent content uh, content creator, as as you as, as you two both are as well, is that I've been dealing with that my whole life. I didn't get you know Infinite Wealth. I didn't get you know um, Tekken. These are things I I love. Games I you know I go extra hard for. We didn't yeah. get it right. Yeah, this this is this is standard for us. Like we, yeah, we never like, get these type of we games. We didn't get it. it. Sometimes yeah. we'll get like to me. I appreciate giving me a game the day of it comes out. I do, but me as a content creator, that doesn't mean no good. Now I appreciate yeah. you did it, right. but then when I look at people like Gene have infinite wealth for three weeks, I'm like, why? You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like, I think it comes down to it. If you don't get a review code, that that sucks. But at the same time, if you do decide to actually review the game, don't let that determine what your score is. Right. You know, it's a, to me, the best way IGN, if they felt a way, and I'm not saying that they, they bombed this game because of they didn't get a review code, but it does look like it. You know, you can give an argument that it's ironic they didn't get the review code. You have multiple people, yeah. high-end people at IGN speak out against it. I don't think... You can make the argument that, okay, maybe that they're retaliating for not the review code. If they are, and that's Ooh. if, because I don't know. I, I'm, yeah. I, I don't even... I don't even talk to half the people at IGN. Most of them, no, I don't like them. I don't... So if they are doing that, to me, and I don't know about you guys, if you feel a way about not getting a review code, just refuse to cover it. To me, that feels the bigger statement mm. Okay, than our multi-million dollar uh, you know, a month industry is just not going to cover your game. You're going to get zero coverage from me. To me, that feels like the more hit than, you know, we giving this a 5 out of 10. I don't know if they gave it a 5 out of 10. Mm. If they truly felt like the game was a 5 out of 10, I'm completely okay with the score. But if they did, if it was going to be a 7 out of 10, but the back of the review is mine, they didn't let us play this early to give right. it a 5. That's where I disagree with the with, with, with the, the mindset. If it's truly a 5 out of 10 to IGN, that's okay. But if it's a 5 out of 10 because they didn't get their 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 review code or they didn't get you know special access, that's what I'm like, that's, that's not right. Right. Well, I don't like the spoiling of the ending part. <laughs> that's the part I, I did. I, you know, I, I'm not it's never going to story oriented game too. That's the sad part, yeah, and it's yeah, a I'm good never story. Your favorite app. Yeah, that I didn't like. The um, I'm sorry, kid. No, I don't think they gave it a five because they didn't get a review code. I think they gave it a five because they knew from the jump that they were going to give it a five because they hinted at it in their preview coverage, which is what started this whole process. Um. Mm -hmm. 
the thing is, is that they sh they showed their hands, and the thing is, is like what what happens with these journalists and and previous people want to be like, you know, people want to be the be that one, the one that goes out there and you know and become like infamous. And what typically happens is like when people have early access to the game, and the whole discourse about um Suicide Squad and Kanye, you you brought it up earlier, is when. The access point, I think the, the journals had like this certain access point, right? And they weren't really feeling it, right? And I think what happened is they changed the coverage of, mm. of when they could talk about it because what happened is they, then they just let the public get access to it. And the thing is, people started having a positive reaction to it, right. which was polar, which was opposite from what the, what the journals were saying about it. So they didn't like how that was uh, handled. Mm -hmm. And um, it it led to the pretty much this whole uh, review process. And the thing the thing is about um, the whole problem is I honestly think more publishers because I I either think more publishers just go this route and just like you know forget this embargo period you know let's just release at the same time you know what I mean every everybody gets the uh, the game if you're gonna get a review code you're just gonna get it the uh, the day mm -hmm. that the game releases and whatnot. Um, and, and I think from there, I feel like we'll get more of an accurate because at that point it's less important. You know, right now, right. if you, you're, if you're blessed to get access to a game, you know, two, three weeks before it releases, and then you have exclu uh, 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 access to was put lit. out an opinion before anybody else or before the game come out, that's yes, that's going to do you some numbers it's doing you favor like developers are doing these people favor whether the game is good or bad it's doing the journal it doesn't matter to journals they're going to they, they they have a blessing that they able to put out something like hey i have access to this no one else ha has an opinion on this i do because I've, i was blessed with this access and what mm -hmm. they do with that information what they do with that access is up to them you know what i mean they right. can get big-headed and just you know i'm gonna use this moment and you know I'm a, I'm a trash this game, whether I, you know, I like it or love it or whatever. And the thing I also don't like is when people come out and do these public statements when they know, well, we won't be, you know, having a review ready because we didn't get a code. Like, well, as if we care, we don't like, like, as if I'm only waiting for what you have to say, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, and it's like you, you make this announcement. And then you know you, you want to you make you run this little the charade you, so that you it gets somebody's that attention. This is entitled behavior. <laughs> it, yes, the this entitled uh, behavior. It, you know, it, it actually comes from what uh, Addict said. I think last year or two years ago, he said uh, toxic positivity. It that's Ooh. what toxic positivity leads to. It leads to people being entitled, right? Ooh. Everything's positive, positive, positive until it ain't. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> So like over, people, people like there are it's crazy how people switch and turn when it comes mm. to things that you know turns them off. It's like, all right, no, we gotta be this, we gotta be this. And then the minute something isn't going their direction, where's that positivity going? Like, you know what I mean? Like we all been waiting for, you know, Rock City because they they've been gone for years. You know, their last game was 2015, Batman. And the thing is, when you read some of these reviews. And I'm gonna get off Suicide Squad in a, in a minute, but when you read some of these views, it's, it's unfair. It's it's, it's 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 how what other game this happened to? They're reviewing the game for what it's not. They're, re I was they're, just about they're to reviewing say, yeah. the game because it's they're pretty much ba they're badgering the game because it's not Batman Arkham Knights two. Arkham Knights, right, it's right. not I like a new a brand new Batman yeah. experience, so yeah. it has to take smoke for that. And I think that's unfair, man. I think I'll the see. game can't be it, like judge it for what it is. It's it a is. game about. I do want to say real quick. Mm -hmm. I believe it's okay to compare it to its to previous work it did, but that can't be the center of your review. That's right. got to be like a like a foundation. It's like, look, here's the gameplay, here's the story. Mm -hmm. I do believe the gameplay was done better in these games, but it can't be. Don't buy this game because it's not Arkham. Like well, what it is too is, and I think the elephant in the room is what you and Kid are alluding to is that because Rocksteady, let's be clear, them Batman Arkham Arkham Asylum, those are lauded as god tier. For superhero games, for gameplay, people love Rocksteady because of just these games. So there's a big portion. It's kind of added what we talked about when we say, yo, people don't play 
at some of these uh, outlets don't play other genres. All they play is the hashtag just one third person cinematic over the shoulder narrative like experience. And then when they don't get that, right, or they, they just don't play live service or they just don't play these other style of games. So what happens is you sometimes you have outlets that have journalists that love that style of game you hear the news that this game is not going to be that so that sometimes automatically puts it in that pocket where it's like you know what i don't know if i'm gonna like this game <laughs> you know what I'm saying because it's it's live service and we got listen i was gonna say as a person who likes live service i'm going to say it there is a huge bias against live service games right and i get it because it's rockstar some people they, they, they just want Arkham Asylum, the next iteration, and, and I get you that. You know where you see, you, you know right. where you see the the bias. Like people, mm -hmm. people are so big on what they want to play, they don't care about what other people want to play. Exactly, you know, it's, it's okay. Even me, you mm -hmm. know, I was very. You remember, I was very yeah. anti. Um, I was very anti. Uh, Death Loop. I'm like, it's not mm -hmm. dishonored. I don't want to right. play. But when I actually played the game with an open mind. Right. I was one of the few Arkham Knight, uh, Arkham, uh, right. <laughs> Arcane Studios that was like, yo, I really enjoy this game. And I feel like a lot of these developer, not developers, a lot of the publishers and people, they don't want that middle ground. Like a lot of these media people, they want what they want because they've been nothing but spoon fed their entire life. I mean, it, it's just one of those things that I hate when a genre gets attacked you know what I'm saying? and because people either don't play it don't like that genre so get the people who have the passion for the genre so that can give us the the insight it's okay to be disappointed that the game is not you know announced to be what you thought it was but once it's out in the wild once it's about to be judge it for what it is and, and then view it on that merit so it is what it is you know it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that it could be like that and i think the other thing that i really pushed back on completely unrelated was um I haven't played Call of Duty in like years. And this last one I played and I'm like, what are people talking about? Like I I like this it is no less than a seven or eight to me. So I was like, I don't know how we got to a three or a four or a two, or whatever other outlets were getting. You know what I really was like mm -hmm. I really like what Smooth said. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it, but Smooth was talking about, you know, people say, Oh, you know, uh reviews don't matter now. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be attacking the these mm -hmm. uh these publishers like IGN. Uh, but then he said, but he said, you know what I find hilarious about these people saying this is I was saying the same thing about Starfield and the same people told me, Oh no, it's just a review but right, now right. that it's a third party game and it's not Ooh. Xbox. It does feel like the industry doesn't necessarily care what, uh, you know, they, they, they want to like act like the reviews don't matter now. Yeah. I mean, reviews do matter in the sense of, like I said, the business aspect of gaming. You you get your game bombed by one of the biggest outlets or respected outlets, it's gonna do damage. It is. It and I think a lot I, of damage. I think we're at that point. I think started last year, a couple of games I seen do this where they're like, nah, fam, y'all not getting it. And and sometimes they let's be real too. They're trusting the content creator more than they trust the, the some of the some of the bigger outlets. Because they <laughs> Because we're seeing the rise of the content creator. That's another thing we're seeing. So I think the industry is changing. This is the first time, you know, there's some big pushback. And I think as a result of that pushback by publishers, we're getting retali some retaliation from some some outlets in reference to them not getting what they are normally the access they have. Because kids said it best. It's we can't lie about it. If you're first at something or if you have a two week to three week window and no one else has that oh you're shooting up seo oh you're shooting up youtube view you're shooting up the algorithm so there is going to be some level of resentment because at the end of the day that's money that you lost out on that's access that you you thought you were getting that you could be ahead of everyone else we, we can't act like that's not part of this and people the business part of this is real it's business from the, the, the journalists but it's also business from the publisher like yo bro you're not going to metacritic bomb me because if i give it to you and now everybody thinks my games are done and i saw the developers p fighting back talking about yo you know the game's actually fun or whatever whatever because there are people who play in the alpha versus the vertical slice that i guess certain outlets got it's 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 it's, it's gonna be more of this as as this the video games cost too much money to me, we're going to see a lot of this business fighting going on. 
Yeah, and it's like I said, you know, the only time I don't like it is when a company works with you like crazy and you cover all their games and then when they had their big, big games, they're like, we ain't giving you that. I was like, oh, okay. Because yeah. so <laughs> to me at that point, I feel like especially influencers need to stand up for themselves because it's like if a company like right now, Square Enix don't work with me at all, like at all. Like I mean, low key be looking like I'd be simple for Square Enix. <laughs> I'd be trying to get that game so much. But then there's other companies that we work with regularly, and when they mm -hmm. have a big game come out and they don't hit us up with that review code, I feel a way because it's like, oh, you you wanted me to sit there and help you build your other games, but when it come to the, the, the next one walking, big the, you say don't look, and I'm like, nah. I feel you. The struggle, the struggle, the struggle's real. The struggle's real. So just a little tidbit, just to, you know, throw, because it's always shade, right? Uh, so uh, Digital Foundry, I think, posted their coverage for Suicide Squad. Um, and uh, Xbox Series X took the W with 1728p, 60fps, uh, better uh, shadows and, and whatnot. Uh, PS5 came uh, with 1440p, 60fps. Oh, wow. uh, a Series S uh, struggling, but still managed to hit 60fps at a good rate, at, but at oh, 900p. So, yeah, yeah. So, 60 60fps you know. across the board, they prioritize frame rate. Um, and, um, so it is, like I said, the game was interesting. I'm just, I'm just holding off. Maybe, you know, it lands in game pass or maybe it lands on sale. Uh, who knows how this all turns out. I do want to play it, but this is not something I consider like day one or anything like that. And I'm not down with the cause. So I'm not boycotting this game and I'm not reverse boycotting the game. So it is what it is. Um, I think WB will just be fine. They're, they're making money hand over foot. I think uh, Hogwarts Legacy has done very well for them, and I think uh, Suicide Squad would be uh, do well as well. I think the biggest reason that I I, I do kind of like push for, you know, because to me when you play the core aspect of this game, it doesn't really feel like this game was originally designed to be a game as a service. It kind of feel like they shoehorned it midway through development. Mm. Um, so no, like, I think it was designed that way, and they, and they tried to slowly reverse it, but it, without keep on delaying it or canceling it. They just did whatever they, they whatever they pivot. I do, I do like the the amount of people standing up that like, look, we don't mind games as a service. Just try stop trying to shoehorn it to everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I do hope that this shows other publishers don't come to us with the games as a service because at this point there's like a hundred games as a service and there's only so much time the average consumer has. It's like either hit us with a, a, a an amazing single player co op experience type of game. Or be unique with games of service because just because you throw something out there don't mean people are going to play it. All right. I don't mind games as a service, but the thing I is, don't either, but I do the, feel like some of these companies it's the concept. are going too far away. No, it. but no, because any game every any game can work as a game as a service. It's the concept of how you do it, right? So games like, you know, you know, the the destinies and divisions and stuff where they kind of want you in and all this other stuff, the seasons, the call of duty, stuff like that. I think that's overblown. Bring back episodic games. That's how single players can work as a game. Or bring back the episodic. You know how the, the telltale, you know, you know, right, we beat right. the little you know the episode, you know, a couple months later we get, you know, episode two and whatnot. Like Ooh. if you want like do that. If they have like I I hate the way that this sounds. I don't want to make it sound like I'm telling them to piecemeal games, but there's Ooh. ways and unique ways. And this is what I thought games game pass would end up doing to Ooh. games, is like it would be like a safe haven for the telltale games and like the life is strange type games where you could release right. episodically. And I think right. that is actually fine. That's still a games as a service at the end of the day. Cause you could either buy the game up front or you could buy it by episode. You know what I mean? The episode. And if you, if you're invested into the story that's being told, hopefully it's a good story. You will buy in just like people, you know, continue to pay for Netflix and Netflix could have no reason to, episodically release stuff since it's all everything's on demand but they they do there's value behind doing it it'll keep you subscribing you're there you know what i mean you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna watch and whatnot so i think games as a service can work where it's not it doesn't feel like we're always being nickel and diamond I, and i think it could work across all platforms it doesn't have to always be like a survival shooter or a massive multiplayer it can work uh with single player games if the content is right you know what i mean but um because uh, we got that stat where like 95 percent of developers right now are making games as a service i'm just curious to see what kind of games they are you know what i mean um mm -hmm. because like if everything is following the model of what we think a games as a service is then you know 
a lot of us is going to just fall off the the gaming stuff because the thing is the way they want us to how they want us to interact with those type of games they want those to be we have to treat it like a job essentially it's the time yeah, right you're living in it yeah. you, you're living I, in I, it I and you got to dedicate to one game and i can't do that I, I hate to jump into this. Let's let's get off Suicide Squad. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, uh, Persona Three Reload, uh, came out day one. Game Pass, uh, it, it, it's good. I think it's at a, a eighty nine. I downloaded it. Uh, I'm going to give my quick hits. Uh, I know I know Addict's going to go in on this game if he hasn't already. I haven't played it yet. Um, bro, I tried. The world's to... been taking all my time, man. I'm I'm gonna try to get into this game, but the thing I I can't say I'm about play Persona sometime series, today, but right now it's power. I, I streamed, uh, not streamed. I recorded maybe thirty minutes a game uh, of the the first thirty minutes of the game. I, I not no combat yet. I haven't captured any combat yet, and, that, and that's the thing. I was like, I just want to get like I get it, the build up. I just want to get to the combat. Like I just want to get into like the, a loop. I want to get into the loop already. You know what I mean? Yep. But yep. from what I can see is like they did a good job with the remake because they allowed us to play the portable version on Game Pass early. Was it last year or something like that? Um, and the game visually is an upgrade. It, it feels more, it looks more like Persona 5. They got ray tracing in the game. It had 4K, it had 60 FPS, even though it's turn-based, but they 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 made it work. It's, it's, an, it's an attractive game for what it is. Uh, it's a game that I feel like I can, like the thing is I got lost in Persona 5. I just, I, I, I forgot what took me off of it. And I think it was Wolong. Was it Wolong? Mm. That's what it was. That was like, a great game. Yeah. I beat like I think I got through three or four. Um, what's the, what do they call those things in Persona Five? Uh, the towers, chapels, palaces. 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 Uh, I got through four palaces. Did you just and, call it a chapel? I don't know. What they call it. <laughs> yes, but I got through. But the thing is, I was <laughs> in it. And now, now the sad thing is, Persona Five is not in Game Pass anymore. So if I want to continue my playthrough, I actually got to buy it, right? So, um, so but I know I can get jiggy with uh, Persona Three Reload. I just wanted to know y'all thoughts on P Three. Uh, you know, another mm -hmm. one in Game Pass Day One. Yeah. Uh, so they're definitely yeah. supporting the Xbox. So shout out to you know Sega. Oh yeah. Shout out to hey, shout out to the yeah, Atlas was... situation because that that was a a battle that you know a lot of people thought would never happen. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to, to play it yet. I did download it. Um, probably we'll get to it, but it's gonna be a while because I got obviously tech in that which I did did down Infinite Wealth, which now has my time. But yeah, I'll definitely fire it up and see what's going on. Um, Maddie goes super hard for this game. I'm very curious about um the changes. If y'all saying it's de it's more like Persona Five, I'm gonna be interested. My only issue with Persona Five is. It's got, Damn, that game is long. <laughs> Cause I was, I put mad hours in. I was like, yeah, you even made it anywhere. <laughs> I'm like, you, you yeah, gotta play like got sixty put, hours, and then you're halfway. Fifty hours into there. So I was like, Persona, I love you, but I can't do a hundred and so. Like, I, I had to be there at when you dropped. You know what I'm saying? Maybe at that time. You know what I'm saying? But if three reloaded is not as long and still has the Persona Five vibe, then I'm, I'm gonna like it. Persona Five was fire. Love the art style. Love the whole vibe of it. The combat is is dope. It's stylish. You know, very stylized over the top. And yeah, uh, and they, what I like is they, they they have fun with it, and they also can get mature when they want to. And the music is always always good. So it's like a comic book. And to me, those games are like a little comic book jumping off the screen kind of energy. But what about you, Attic? This is this was your joint from back in the day. Yeah. So you know, I haven't got to it yet. I, I am gonna play it a little bit today and tomorrow. It's uh, I was gonna stream it, but I, I'm not streaming a big game like that right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think what I'm what I'm more curious about because this is a great get for mm -hmm. Xbox. I'm just like you cannot miss mm -hmm. Persona Six. Like, mm -hmm. like you got to make sure that's on Xbox. Yeah, facts. I'm gonna give you guys a funny um a funny stat, and and, and mm -hmm. both of you things have in common, right? Mm -hmm. Both uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, this new one, and Persona mm -hmm. Three celebrated their best selling entrance, like fastest selling games. Uh, with these two recent releases, and what do these two games or series have in common? The Both these series stable. were held down as PlayStation exclusives, right? Like, like the Persona series, you know, was tied down to PlayStation arbitrary for no reason. Same thing with Yakuza. Now that they finally got to the masses, day and date for everyone to enjoy, they're actually seeing oh this we can actually sell this many units there are a lot of people interested in our games so when you think about like 
what happened with the whole Persona, I think Persona 4, Persona 5, when they were on PlayStation for all these years, all the Yakuza's, we had to get those backlogged into Xbox, uh, those uh, six, seven games, whatever they, they were uh, doing, and they finally came, and now that they're making, when they're coming, like, all right, this is our fresh new game, and it's launching simultaneously everywhere, this is the potential we can do. So if that should tell anything uh, to Sega uh, with Persona and Yakuza, yeah, don't lock yourself to PlayStation ever again. Like you, you, you are. It's okay now. Yes, it, it was stupid to do that. So, mm. like Yakuza's place in history is everywhere, and and Game Pass isn't hurting their games. And Persona's place. So for Persona Six, if that's the thing, there's no way. If I'm Sega and Atlas, I'm tying that down. PlayStation. If Persona Three, a remake of one of our old games, mm. is was anticipated and is fastest selling Persona on Steam and whatnot. Mm -hmm. then what do you think Persona 6 is going to do? Uh, mm -hmm. An actual new entrant. Like, why would they withhold that to PlayStation when you have an opportunity to, like, literally hit your apex? Like, I don't okay. know how Persona's been, a while, uh, been around for a while, but think about it. From Software hit their apex with what game? Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Right? Uh, the, uh, the freaking CD Project Red, they hit their apex with, with what was it, Witcher 3 or was it Cyberpunk? But you had the first two Witchers, Witcher but Witcher 3, 3 hit it, which propelled Cyberpunk, right? right? So if you're by, if you all the year you got everybody, now everybody's familiar with Persona outside of the PlayStation community, and you working on Persona 60 Ready, that's that will by default be your apex. That's I, no, gotta I, be I, everywhere. I it's the gotta be everywhere. Thing, only, thing, only, only slight pushback I'll say because I agree with you, but the only pushback is if the bag that PlayStation or Xbox gives you is big enough. Because what these companies would do is say, okay, this is what we anticipate with our numbers is where we're gonna be with if it's multi-platform, right? So sometimes Game Pass deals are done where they go, look, okay. We we figured this is how much you would get. This is the offer we're giving you based on that. And some people are like, yo, you know what? This guaranteed Bruh, bag. I'm telling you, know you who's, who's the president of Sega? I'm like, your bag ain't good enough. That's me. <laughs> you know, that's me. <laughs> so that, 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 that it could be that. And we've seen it. We've seen it in the past. Why do you think, for example, a lot of these big games like we're not seeing GTA nothing? Mm -hmm. You know, GTA Six. A lot of these big games, not day and date, because they're like, yo, we can maximize the most profit. Maybe we see y'all on the back end, yep. right? Or the marketing, even the marketing now, right? So I think that's what what a lot of this is. But I agree with you with Sega in particular. You are right. Mm -hmm. They have seen something, and even Square Enix to some extent yeah, now. Yeah. They're like, yo, we don't think it was a really good idea to make Final Fantasy 16 or some of these games exclusives because now we missed out on all this profit we could have been getting if it would have been multiplayer and on PC from the jump. And I think that's a big deal. I think companies are pivoting to that. And I think Homegirl that they signed now from Microsoft, she's over in the Xbox gaming division and on yep. the Japanese side. Yep. I think her name is Mina something. She's mm -hmm. talking about how Xbox is breaking those barriers with these Japanese companies and talking about what you could get by putting it on a platform as well as PC she's and Cloud. Low, she's saying, yo, you can't rely on the, X, the PlayStation Square. shit. They not enough. <laughs> Square Enix is every time, I don't know, because I don't know how long in the future that they do, they tie these games, but they're, I think, they realize, like, for example, like, they'll have these things, like, Forspoken, Final Fantasy uh, 16 is like, okay, yeah, PlayStation's a great partner, right? Mm -hmm. They're a great partner, and you the do great base. for PlayStation, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not a great partner for you and what your plans are, because Square is very harsh on what they need, what their goals are. Yeah. For yeah, sale. yeah, so yeah, the thing is, their, their, their games need to be everywhere day day at the same time for them to hit their, their metrics, right? The, the metrics that they're mm -hmm. looking for. And it's a shame, like, Games like Forspoken and, and Final Fantasy 16 and even Final Fantasy 7 being tied down again for these all these periods. And it's like, yo, like, we can do this. Like, we really can do this. And I, and I hope that they're looking at Sega and they're looking at all these other, pro even looking at their games that they didn't tie down to PlayStation that are uh, be, becoming a, a success and looking like, all right, we 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 can't, we got to kind of like let this rock. We kind of have to benefit ourselves and get that money um from xbox we'll we'll do marketing deals but if we have an opportunity to get like to sell out on steam and, and get some get a bag from xbox and whatnot while still remaining multi-platform they should do that i think every publisher's best deal is to go with xbox not exclusively but more mm -hmm. so like okay 
I could sign a Game Pass deal, get a bag, still maximize my profits on PlayStation and PC. That I don't understand why more publishers aren't doing that. It's like, all right, chances yeah. are I'm not going to sell as great on Xbox, right? Because right. Ma majority of the users there has mm -hmm. migrated to the subscription model. So mm -hmm. why not secure the bag there, still right. maximize what I'm going to give? Because PlayStation, they're going to buy my games because they love playing, you know, $70, $60 for games. PC, they're, like games are just, traditional games have just been popping off over there so you still maximize potential i feel like that's the best case scenario of rather than all right i signed up for playstation i'm really pretty much relying the game is relying on the playstation user base to buy this game until uh sony right. relinquishes us to at least sell it on pc and then on xbox later if they even allow that i think that mm -hmm. i think that at the end of the day i don't think playstation's paying anybody enough to cover all those bases xbox game pass based enough could literally cover whatever your market, whatever it is that you need that cover your, your cost is covered and still wow. just net out profit on PC and on PlayStation. Like I, I think it's, I think it's stupid that n n publishers aren't really looking at it. Like, wait a minute. I don't actually have to go exclusive. I just have to go in game pass. Right. I mean, it could be the bags are different too. You know, back in then when Sony, let's be honest, Sony was more in a position of power mm -hmm. in the PS4 generation versus the Xbox one. Mm -hmm. So at that point, and let's just say the bag was bigger for those companies. So I could say, like, okay, we'll take this bag if we're Atlas. We'll keep Persona yeah. over here. We'll keep whatever, Look, whatever. We don't know if mm -hmm. if Xbox is putting those type of bags anymore. Like right. They, they, cause, because they bought Activision, mm -hmm. because they bought Bethesda. You Good might point. not. Those bags might not those bags exist. Those might not anymore. come again. And, and now it might be what I think I'm seeing is, like, Okay, if we're messing, if Xbox is messing with the big AAA publisher, it's like, oh, we're going to get your brand new game that you may not be unsure, if you're unsure about, right? We'll get your, you know, Power World, or we'll get your, um, what's the joint from Capcom? Like Capcom. Oh, that Dino that? Crisis, that Dino yeah, Crisis game, Dino I forgot. Dino Crisis joint? Yeah. They wasn't, you could tell they wasn't sure. Yeah. And then they got a new joint, Path of the Goddess or something. Like, you're yeah. not getting monster hunt to day one on game yeah. pass right but you're gonna get our new joint that we want to show and if it pop okay great and i think that's those experimental what's titles that they're right yeah, those. and to addict's point in microsoft's defense they like look we used to do that when we didn't have no studios <laughs> you know what I'm saying? now you got abk now you got zenimat so the the reliance on that bag and spending on that bag might be less now priority in the building is also a possibility maybe yeah Absolutely, bro. But what I think what what Microsoft needs to do though, they don't have to acquire studios anymore or publishers. I think they they should be fine. I think, however, what's important is you look at the existing publishers that exist and you sign publishing deals or Game Pass deals with those publishers. That means so I'm going to sign this deal with let's say Ubisoft. I'm going to sign this deal with let's say uh, maybe Square or or embracer that every game you release for like two years is is day one in game pass that's effective too it doesn't have to be an acquisition it doesn't have to be an exclusive but like yo if i have a publishing partner that's going to supply my subscription uh like pretty much what uh how paramount has it or like how netflix has it, like oh i can rely on this studios uh to put their lineup of movies in my service as well as my own content we good and I think that's smart. If they're, Hopefully they're thinking that way. Instead of buying games a la carte, go to the publisher. You know what? Like, I like this publisher a lot. I actually, let's, let's, let's rock. I actually feel like the best case they can do these days is to reach it to like a Team 17 or Devolver Digital. It was like, how much is it going to take for the majority of your published games to go on Game Pass? Those are smaller indie games, and I feel like those would be easier to get than like a Persona 6. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's all about the evaluation. It's all about a lot of times. Sometimes publishers, you know, price themselves out. They feel they' about to be bigger than the world. They think they got some. Xbox like, nah, our metrics yeah, say Xbox definitely got to deal with power worlds. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 you, it's a push pull. You, you win some, you lose some, right? You know what I mean. Yeah. But I feel like, um, like, sir, and I feel like some of these games that are coming to our dubs, they have posted the day of the state of play. Xbox posted the Xbox as an amazing 2024, right? And they listed oh, all the yeah. games that's freaking um um that's coming. Wow. Uh man, I had it, I had it open and I'm like, hold up. And some of these games I forgot was even coming into like uh Game Pass and whatnot, you know. So it, it, I I'm looking forward to see what's gonna go on this year in the spring, but 
Guys, let's get into like really what's been really brewing. You know what I mean? I've been, you know, pissed off. I've been talking on Twitter a lot. Uh, there's been like this leak of Pi Fi Rush with these what you would call exclu platform exclusive t shirts, right? Um, the, the we got the green Xbox Shadow Drop t shirt. You got a Steam, um, already got their uh, I think t shirt, and I think Epic game store uh is getting uh or either already has this t-shirt now there's a blue t-shirt like like we hear it uh, uh a red t-shirt that says uh rock out anywhere I mean, what the hell does that mean right switch on the go switch. so that kind of just like it's like you know what's going on every week xbox fans and fanatics and fanboys are being reminded that their games are going multi -plat by a new rumor a new leak and it's it's just like it's being like we're being poked and bothered i don't like it i don't like it at all like i don't like it one bit and we just got a report uh from like idosloff they said according to an a Zenimax employee sarah bond xbox director will speak in the spring to explain the change in Xbox strategy regarding Hi-Fi Rush, CFDs, and other games going multi-platform. Wait for springtime. Sarah Bond will say something you guys, what it says, will say something you guys, oh, oh will say something. You guys will be fine. I want to know what that you guys will be fine part. Who is he speaking for? I, I want to know what will make me fine with this. Uh, but they said, summary of the employees' <laughs> other remarks are metrics-driven, internet discord discourse isn't being considered so what we say don't matter um, but concerns are valid uh considered discourse if looked at from different angles there is missing information that you may not see allusions to a very concise explanation by xbox about the situation yeah because they owe they, they owe us an explanation a secondary speaker mentions that other people who were concerned previously are now saying we shouldn't be as concerned as we are well, what does that mean um the big three platform holders have the liberty of paving the road and laying the brick at the same time a lot of conversations around this kind of stuff is going and is ongoing and everything discussed has been covered and or has claws around it okay guys we've been getting hit with this these rumors these tidbits the the talking points from satya the other guy that works for microsoft that's like can't, yeah even putting on competitors and stuff and we've been getting the talking points what phil said you know we, we, this is about uh for ba making great games on uh for xbox exclusive that where game pass exists and stuff oh like i don't want to be looked at as a third-party publisher all that stuff we all things considered all things considered man and i just want to know cognito uh, you're nope. usually the voice of reason. You're usually corporate <laughs> cog. Sometimes when we get out of line and whatnot, I need to know, man, like your thoughts on this. And in what Ooh. world does this make sense Ooh, to us? This is the, yeah, no, I feel you, bro. Being an addict, have these conversations almost every day. <laughs> um, look, th this is, I always try to be balanced about stuff, but I have to be fair to the hardcore as well, which is, the main problem here is they, they get accused of talking out of both sides of their mouth. And, and this is the case. You know, in one, in one sense, we were told, look, with Game Pass games, with Game Pass exists, games are exclusive, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. That wasn't we, that long ago either. Right. Then we were told, well, what about when Ori and the Blind Forest went to the Nintendo Switch? What happened there? Oh, you know, we looked at that was not a sustainable model. We didn't think that was the right way to go. We don't want to do that. Okay. All right. And then, that was even sooner. <laughs> right. Then we had the Tim Stewart com comments where you see in the stakeholders say, yo, we, we, you hear the word co and consoles a lot. You know, Xbox platforms, PC and consoles. Well, what, what does that mean? Right. So that discourse comes out. The third party rumors rear back up again. Right. And then we get the fill statement. Nope, we're not going third party. You know, this is where Game Pass exists, exists kind of thing. Okay, cool. So again, at, ver at bare minimum, the messaging is all over the place. We have to admit that part. Like the messaging is not good because the Xbox fan doesn't know what is happening, right? So now we get this, right? We get the high, the high fire rush first. The sh Chai's in different shirts, red. He's in he's a switch red. He's in PlayStation blue, you know, kind of thing. 
And then we have the the uh, obviously this comment from allegedly a Zenimax employee talking about Sarah Bond's going to address the nation, so to speak. Here's my feeling, and it's two simple things. I had this conversation with Attic last night. If Xbox is going to tell me this is about survival, this is about we didn't make our targets. If we don't do this, we won't be able to give you the experiences you like. We're way behind. ABK went two years longer than we thought it was going to be. And if we don't do this, and when I say this, older titles like a Sea of Thieves, High, High Rush, or what have you, put them in. But this allows us to keep Game Pass day and day. If they say that, there's a part of me. I'm like, okay, I don't like it, <laughs> but I understand if it's about survival. If it's about Yo, you know, we could be making way more bread if we put, we drop, you know, the, the older joints on, on it. You know, we can make way more bread if we make all the ABK and Bethesda games multi-plat. You know that. And if those guys won out in the room, because in the corporate, at the corporate setting, this is how it goes. There are, there are factions all the time. Projects get sent up to the top. You could be working on something. Sarah Bond could be working on something. This group could be working on something. And this is the initiative they want the company to go. At some point, it's called OKRs. People are going to bring their OKRs. They're going to bring their rubrics to prove their points of why this is the strategy we need to go. At some point, someone at the top executive level is signing off. And the losing faction has to now capitulate to the other one. Right? When that happens, people leave. Some people leave. Some people say, hey, I'm not feeling that. And it could be a situation, if I'm not to guess, this is what I'm guessing, because the messaging is so mixed, shows me there is dysfunction. The messaging shows me there is a faction in Xbox. I am going to assume that that is Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, Sarah Bond, Aaron Greenberg, who have been historically pro-gamer, pro-understanding the mission of rebuilding Xbox back to its glory, understanding the power of studios, understanding the power of exclusives. That group, you, ca you can't tell me they are for this strategy. You can't tell me that. I, I've been in the room with every single one of them. Face to face. Conversations off air, behind air. You can't tell me. Is Sarah Bond short? Sarah Bond, is she short? No, she kind of tall. She kinda tall? Okay, <laughs> she looks, just, yeah, she kind of tall. Yeah, yeah. She, she carry on. Yeah, yeah, she does. She gets with it too. I've had yeah, conversations yeah, offline yeah, too, yeah. so I already know how they move. So that per, that group to me understands the pulse. Now, this is what I think. If this is going to happen, this is what I think happened. It feels like, for whatever reason, the group who is about the third party may have the data. See, this is where, when it comes to corporate, if you got the data, <laughs> you ain't winning. I don't care what's going on. Go they're going to destroy your rubric. They're going to destroy your OKR. They're going to say, look, we were supposed to be here at, I don't know, 2021. We thought ABK was going to be done, and we're supposed to have all this extra revenue. Yo, we're going to have to do something. We need this return on investment now. What, what we do, give me a plan that gets us back. They not, may not be in, in the red, but they may be just barely over the black, and they expect it to be way high, especially when I was at um, Microsoft Gaming is now past Windows, I believe now. Yeah. So they may have had these high projections of where they're supposed to be. So that's my guess. So to me, this is what happens now. This is what I talk about. It. My thing is this. How do you tell the hardcore Xbox fan? Kid, kid, you said it best when you was on IOP. You said it's like they're at the mountaintop now. You got the games. You got the studios. You're supposed to snap your competition out of existence. You literally said that. Like, why do this now? See, that's the problem they're going to have to explain with this in spring I'm, thing. I'm going to just say it. There's no ex go. explaining. Right. Not. So like, how are you going to... A, a, a sentence or a, or a structuring sentence that you could say to explain to people why this is a good idea. How are like you going to convince the Xbox One owner, the guy that stood with you in your darkest hour, that understood you had no exclusives, right? That understood the whole situation and stayed loyal to the platform. Then the minute you get to the power of strength, you get ABK. You get you don't even see the vision through, right? <laughs> So if you didn't see the and now the minute and here's the thing that that it is not about the emotionality that games are going to PlayStation. It's more of a fact like, yo, this is kind of like the first game of the year, high quality game Xbox had under their battle. And the minute you get to the top, here you go, giving it over. So that's going to be the perception and they can't escape that part. Yeah. It's going to be very hard for them in that respect. Now, 
look, gamers are gamers. We're one hot trailer away from forgetting everything. <laughs> they show us, let's be real too. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot, but we don't leave. Now, we got to see if dudes really say, yo, nah, that's it. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I can't, I can't believe y'all did this. I was loyal. Now, here's my thing, and I'll give it to Addict. I know I'm rambling, but here's the last thing. And I, this is where me and Addict are so lockstep. Is this a situation where you're worried about short-term greed versus now damaging your brand? Because at the end of the day, guess what? Nintendo and PlayStation, a lot of those guys in that ecosystem, they're not leaving. The only shot you had at them leaving is if you go, damn, they got that Call of Duty over there. Damn, they got the, the, um, the Blade. They got, like, usually there's one game that breaks a gamer. You know what I'm saying? That has that universal acclaim that you go, or damn. I, them yeah, like, okay, and then I, it's can't, like, I can't do it. I can't front, man. I got to get one. I got to get an Xbox now because, damn, I really like that Indiana Jones, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've had this conversation with Colin. I've had it. Like, I was like, there's certain games that it's like, it would take, and now by doing this strategy, now the PlayStation and the Nintendo guys is like, eh, I'm just going to wait. We'll get a high fire rush. We'll get it eventually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the, an Xbox strategy, maybe th this is what corporate, the team that's winning, I'm going to tell you what they say. Most likely they are saying, okay, if we give them high fire rush, we'll have high fire rush too. And now more people know about high fire rush. And now we're going to have all these sales, which we will see if they, they're going to truly sell what they're going to sell. And that'll make people get our platform. I don't necessarily know about that, but I'm done rambling. I talked a lot. Oh, I'll let y'all go. Attic, attic. Because yeah. I, I don't know how long I will ramble for it, man. Because I, sometimes I feel like I be, I, sometimes I feel like I'm going to cry and then I have to smack, smack myself like, I'm a grown man. I got, I shouldn't be worried about this. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Here's the thing I do believe that uh, this is, you could argue. This is probably the most positive that Xbox in, in like the situation they've been in in decades. They have ABK, Bethesda, uh, you know, Game Pass is growing, maybe not as much as they'd like, but it is growing. Starfield did decent numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're, they're on the upward trajectory. But then I feel like every time they get in a situation like this, they're like, there's a rake, let's step on it. And, and you know, what's crazy is like, they, and I, I believe it. I truly believe if they go through with this and people was like, oh, it's just high five brush, says who? We don't know where that ends. We don't know if high five rush, like God forbid high five rush comes out and it's, a, and it's a massive success. Then it's over. It's a wrap. It, it's just, the part that kills me is just like, if they are talking about console sales, Smooth, what have they done the past few years? This is the reason you don't need an Xbox. You got PC. You can just do that. Yeah, and then they come out there in the Star Force, Starfield marketing and say, you don't even need a console. You can play this on your, now, uh, on your, I, I on your phone. I ain't going to lie. Just a little ad here. Uh, like the other day, uh, a Starfield ad came across my Samsung TV, which I don't have the newest Samsung. My Samsung a couple years old. And I guess the update is live for all Samsungs now. Because I got a Starfield ad that said play now. It's like, oh, I hit okay. The, game, the Xbox app come up and I installed it, signed in, and I started playing. I was like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm currently logged in right now. I'm about to move the Xbox from the living room and put it in another room. <laughs> but go ahead. My bad, Attic. <laughs> my issue with this whole thing is it's like you, you've done nothing for years. But tell people you don't need an Xbox. Yep. You you you, you, oh, you like Ori? Oh, that's fine. We're putting that on the Switch. And then they take the IPs that we want and they give it to other people. Oh, you like you 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 like uh Banjo Kazooie? Oh, I, you guys all we're gonna put it in Smash. Ain't nothing happening to you. Then that's like I said, they take the streaming thing. Oh, you you like Starfield? You don't even need an Xbox. Just grab your phone. It's just like so you've done nothing but years. Do this, and then you're gonna bitch that they ain't the consoles ain't selling. Now, let's yeah. go to game sales. It can't be about game sales because guess what? Hi Fi Rush didn't even sell on Steam. You, you shadow drop this bitch, you put it in Game Pass, which it's a first party, so naturally it's gonna cannibalize itself when it comes to sales on the console version. 
And then you'd be like, yo, why didn't High Five rush so? Because you literally stacked all the, the cards against it. Yeah. It's just like, you either chase the subscription bag, Xbox, or you chase the console bag, Xbox. You can't do both. You can't chase the subscription bag that, that, that hurt your console bag and then bitch when the console bag ain't where it is. Bro. You're absolutely right. The, you know, the Hi-Fi Rush was a gift and a curse. So I was hyped for that shadow drop. I thought it was one of the best things they did. And then hindsight, like, damn. Yeah, but the thing is, it, it was a good move on their yeah. part. But the problem is, is it seems like they had unrealistic expectations on something that they were going to shadow drop. Now, if they put that out there, and like, look, we don't know what this is going to do. We had very low expectations, but we feel like this would shock the internet. That would have been fine. But they're like, we're going to shadow drop this with zero marketing, and we expect $10 billion. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I thought, okay. I think, idiots. Uh, <laughs> all right, so my problem with it, I have a ton of problems with this, is that, and the thing is, it's like, people are like, how many of you have plays? Uh, so CFDs, I, the thing is, is that CFDs is a homegrown new IP, right? So when you mention that, it's just like, yeah, even though I'm not you the biggest fan of CFDs. That, that is their, um, and their, their, their biggest pretty much. From last gen yeah. is, is, is Sea of Thieves. So my thing is like, okay, and the thing is, Hi-Fi Rush, sure. But my thing is, it's not that they're doing it. It's that it's only just these two. It's a gateway. It's a gateway. It's like the gateway drugs, right? It's the reason why, one reason why I didn't want to smoke weed, right? Because I didn't want to upgrade the crack and heroin. You know what I mean? And become an addict, right? So that's, the thing is, is, they're not... That's exactly what's happening. It's like you're gonna sacrifice Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush so they can pave the way for our bigger titles that will truly oh. break us. The Halo oh, Gears of Forces and Starfield. Is so, that the remix? Oh no. So that's what really would and I think that's the that's the problem. It's like, yeah, sure. That's why if they go ahead and test it. So so whoever's challenging Phil Booty, because I know Booty's a dog. I you know he know a dog. Booty ain't with this. He's a, like so. Whoever challenged him was it Tim Stewart, his nerdy ass and Satya pe- beating head ass, right? Yeah. If it's them that's yeah. testing this model, right? I hope to God that High Fire Rush to see if these flop to oblivion <laughs> on any of those other platforms. I hope it flops so bad <laughs> that it cost it more money for you, them you know to port funny? them. You, you know what? You know what's <laughs> funny and not funny at the same time. If you want Xbox, this is the only time in history, I believe, <laughs> Man, that you if want- you want Xbox to stay an exclusive, you low key got to hope for it. Yeah. It's, it's success, it's a wrap. So it's like, yeah. you're sitting here making me want to, you making me want failure on a game i don't want to fail yeah. oh man, they, i need them to flap I, I flop i need playstation <laughs> to stand by it you know they i need playstation to be like hey don't buy it don't touch it i don't want no xbox games don't touch it the only <laughs> people i'm a, i'm a little worried about is them damn nintendo fans but because like this I, is just, this is fu- foreign I, I, <laughs> like, I hear what you're saying Here's i need those games to flop like <laughs> they need to they need to literally go double triple copper they need to do nothing <laughs> Like they need to sit on those digital stores and then flop so bad that they got to get delisted immediately. Like that's what needs to happen to these games because so I don't want learn. no ram of success. Sort of, though they can have a data to show like, hey, uh, it worked. <laughs> like, yes, the the yeah. second part is like, like logistic wise, like that, the only thing they know is money, and it's like you literally put us in a situation where we have to like hope for a bad outcome like that. Yeah, I mean, if it's greed, if this is greed-driven and extra revenue-driven, you know, people are not going to feel it. I will say the only thing you got to look out for, kid, that, that me and Maddie talked about that was surprising. In the leaks, when, I think it was the FTC leaks or one of those leaks, yep. Phil had talked about Fallout 76. And there was a comment like, yo, we're going to have to pull the plug on this. This joint ain't hit to whatever, I'm making up the number, whatever, 5 million, 10 million users, whatever it is, they like, we don't have to pull a plug. And then they ended up letting it go. I think it ended up being on PlayStation. PlayStation Plus, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And because of that, they saw the metrics. And it improved and got better. And thus, Fallout 76 now still gets content. Fallout 76 is having a resurgence right now. Now, I, I feel y'all. I feel y'all. The question is going to be, would Hi-Fi Rush specifically... The only way, unless it's, if it's Nintendo Switch now, I'm not sure. They do got a user base, but I don't know sure. But I do think it would do well, like, on a Switch 2 as a launch title, that attach rate, 
I don't know about PlayStation. I don't know if that title does well. I don't know if Sea of Thieves does well in uh yeah, play, yeah, gamers don't play those type of games like that they, they generally single games. player kind of game i don't know right so it's going to be interesting we're going to learn the vibe i'm getting this is a like you said the gateway drug this is the experiment before what they really want to do and it's going to be up to these metrics i agree with you it's going to be up to those if those metrics flop they could fall back and be like, oh, well, you know, we tried it. We didn't think this was the right direction to go. And business status quo stays the same for the rest of the rest of the stuff. I, but if it goes well, I'm in support of a couple scenarios. This is the only a couple okay. scenarios that I support, right? Okay. All right. If it's a situation where, you know, they do just want to rough up like the industry and see how things go, and you telling me, you know, like the thing is that thing I hate about this is that Xbox is in last place and they're the one making these moves. I need the first place dude to make these moves, right? Okay. If this was like a situation where PlayStation had like is like you know what Spider Man is too big to be confined to this, let's right. eat this out on Xbox. Then look, fuck it, all right, no. all right, yeah, no, take whatever you want. I, I if you gonna give me us one of these Spider Man games, I don't care if it's just Miles Morales. You wanna give me one of these Spider Man games? Yeah, experiment with any one of these titles, right? I think that's respectable, right? Right. Um, or if they truly unlock the way to get a Game Pass app on PlayStation and Nintendo, like a Netflix and a YouTube app, it just be another app on your platform that you have to sign into, and now you're in the Xbox ecosystem from your platform. You know, you don't buy the game individually or a la carte. No, you can access these games only via the game pass description on a game pass app on your console then at that point it's like cool that that's fine mm. it's like it, like i get it because at the mm. end of the day that's where you want to be you want to be right an app on a, a, another platform like netflix that's how netflix is so popular it's like there is just everybody has it on your phone your right. your tablet right. it's yeah. an app is there's no like different things you got to unlock or save to your mm -hmm. home screen or anything it's just an app Right, mm -hmm. and if like if that's how you want to do it, I can see a game, picture a Game Pass app on a Nintendo Switch tab, or or the PlayStation UI, and there's a, a Game Pass, and you log in and you earn your achievements to play the games that way, and you get mm -hmm. those, and that's how you're gonna boost your subscriptions because at that point the games will literally have to be for those platforms. The games will have to be exclusive to the app. To the, uh, if if that was the case, I res like that one. I'm not mad. It makes sense. It's within the business. Is is following the model, right? It's 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 like because I was like all right on Xbox I can either play these games through a subscription or I could buy it outright. If you want to play right. these games and you don't want to buy an Xbox, you gotta Ooh. subscribe to Game Pass, right? Right. Ooh. Respect it. Mm -hmm. But this model, like I don't I don't see a path to success or beneficial mm. as an Xbox. So when they say you know Sarah Bond's gonna come out in the springtime, why they gotta wait till April to tell us this, right? They're gonna just let the <laughs> freaking rumors rot our brains. That's because they like, probably have a hundred people in a room trying to decide yep, how, how to sell it. Is. This is the hardest sell. You My got, thing is, you this, this, way, the, this, this might be mm. the most difficult thing they've ever done, and mm. and to and me, they give us no those Activision games you. and Game Pass yet. Like I, was like, I want my damn Activision games and Game Pass. They're going to do the same thing. They're going to do the same thing. They'll be like, look, everything's coming to everything. But the APK games, they're on Game Pass right okay, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me put it in. Present a scenario to you, kid. And yeah. you, you can only do two things. Let's just, um, this is a hypothetical scenario. You say, do it as you will. Yep. Let's just say Brass comes to you and say, look, you know, kids, kid Spencer. <laughs> oh, this is this is your choices. It's either a Game Pass day and date goes away. We cannot sustain it. So, you know, the games will never go to other platforms for the most part. But you know, maybe six months to a year in order for us to continue our business model because we're behind. We haven't hit our targets or whatever the spiel is. Game Pass day and date has to go away. Or scenario two. Game Pass day and date remains. But in order to sustain it, select titles that are older, that are maybe underperformers or just older, has to come to other platforms. We need this bread. These are your only choices. What do you do? This is where I, you talk. I probably... 
<laughs> I'll probably uh, abandon a day and date. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so selfish. I, I, I agree. Because here's the thing. Ooh. You know, I understand that would be the biggest PR nightmare Microsoft's ever had. They promised something to they promised something yeah. to gamers that, that all gamers that would be the NPCs. biggest. They also promised us had. exclusives. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but to me, I got no problem paying for games. Ooh, I just use yeah. Game Pass because you know it, it, it gives you, you the value and you could do it. But at, at the same time, it's like even though it would be bad PR and it would be it would be horrible PR, I do personally feel like if they confident in those games. Mm -hmm. gamers will shut up real quick and you bring them value in games it doesn't matter if you ask in sixty dollars for them again if you say yo these games are lit they're all mm -hmm. reviewing well they're all doing what obviously not all of them but mm -hmm. the majority of our games we coming out of our camp we hitting over the we hitting over the horizon gamers mm -hmm. will shut up real damn fast when you start delivering quality content I mean, it, it is true. I mean, like I always say, we, we're all, as much as we complain, we're all one trailer, hot trailer away from being back on them, you know what I'm saying, again. So I get that. It, it, it's an interesting discussion, right? I, I don't know. I don't know because there is a part of it's, me that's... It's, it's kind yeah. of a lose-lose situation. It's a lose, yeah, it's like my main concern, and we've said it, Attic, is I'm worried about lose. brand damage. Yeah. How much the moment damage... You announce the moment yeah. you announce something like Starfield coming to Xbox, it's a wrap. I mean, PlayStation, yeah. it's a wrap. They, there's, well, then, no, yeah. there's no the cop, Uno reverse button. Like, right. Because now what happens is every single Xbox release, Hellblade mm -hmm. of, oh, is that coming? Is that going? You've now opened Pandora's box with every release, there will be a question. It, it would take literally years for people to start trusting you again. Right. Pe people don't know, right? But they, it, it's a tough one. I, I, there's the, there's the there's the gamer in me, and then there's corporate cog in me. And the corporate cog, there's some re the only way this happens is if a group has lost due to data. Data wins. Because you can't is, refute it. It's the it, same thing I was mad. Last point, I'll give it back to you, kid. Yeah, I was mad in a small way. I remember this. I had this conversation with Jason Ronald. I said, yo, how the Xbox series? Remember, I'm a Dolby Digital. Dude, I'm a sound, surround sound guy. Xbox One had that. All the joints had that. 360 had that. Series X come out, ain't no damn thing in the back. I'm like, yo, who decision was this? Like, what are we doing? Why? why? Like, he's like, look, we got the data. Like, 2% of y'all are using that. So if they got the data and be like, five dudes copped, I'm just making an decision. Five dudes copped Hi Fi Rush for real. Nobody bought it. What you going to do? Now, to Addict's point, it's like, well, that's your own damn self because who told you to put it as a stealth drop, right? But I, I'm just saying that the corporate is a cold, hard numbers business. And that, to me, this indicates that that group, I don't know if it's led by Tim Stewart or whoever that is, has defeated the Phil and Sarah group. And this is the new day. My thing is, though, what was the whole point of removing Terry Myerson and making Phil Spencer the CEO of gaming? He controls that whole function, yeah. so that means he should control all the decisions coming out of that division. Is, though, is when you're a member of the board, and out. on the board, he's yeah. getting outvoted. He's getting outvoted. He's, he's, remember what Phil Spencer, yeah. what he said about greenlighting games? He said, sometimes the best thing you can do is have people in the room that believe in the project. If you start Facts. losing people in the boardroom that believe mm -hmm. in the project, that means when you go up to vote, Phil has his hands up. He's looking around. Everyone else is like, nah, that ain't in it, Phil. Like, yeah, no, this, that's is it. Why, yeah, sorry, yeah. this is why and, and, uh, I'm going to throw people for a tangent. Let's go. I need the best thing for Xbox is to be owned by a gaming company. Mm. And this is where say, oh, I support go. <laughs> if they're going. I don't uh -oh. want Xbox ever to shut down, but mm. I am support of it being sold to a company that cares about gaming and that's their business model. If gaming, if this is company A's business model... I will agree with you that, that has really helped out like, like PlayStation because like when they make moves, they make moves because they know the gaming industry. Right. Sometimes I feel like Xbox doesn't make moves in the gaming industry. They make moves on evolving the gaming industry, not right. like about the gaming industry itself. Because the, the thing is, look, the hard reality is Xbox... I mean, X is wrong, wrong term, excuse me. Some Microsoft executives, they don't care about gaming like that. How much money is making? Oh, word? Game Pass is going to give us this? Make Phil the new, get him a seat at the table. 
right? So he gets in the door. Shield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? That gets him in the door. But once you, for well, for rich people to Come remain back, like, rich, these ain't the numbers you promised us, Bill. Like, and now you behind on your forecast for whatever reason, whether it be ABK, the court case, whether it be whatever it is, something happened. And now this is a shift because you know they don't believe this. You know, based on everything Phil Sarah, they don't really believe. So I think that's what it is. And at the end of the day, the numbers matter. The finances matter. That's all that's they care about. You, you, you I know, need Facebook or Apple to come through the clutch and you know and save I, I, Xbox. You so know they what can it could be, be a gaming too. company. It could be one of those scenarios where you know Phil and them is like, okay, you know, go do what you think because I, I think they know and we know that this shit ain't gonna work. There's a chance it could, but I think. People that are in Microsoft that don't know the gaming industry are making decisions about the gaming industry and they don't know how this, this gaming right. industry functions. Mm. Like you can literally, every analyst on Twitter said this, this isn't going to work. But for some reason, the, the, the money pockets at Microsoft think it's going to work. So it might. Look, look, you know, Microsoft in the past have evolved certain aspects of gaming. Mm. Uh, this might be just another one of those. But at the same time, it's mm. like we got to see what happens. And, oh, you know, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. No, no, last finish. I was saying, or to your point, Attic, is we have to admit this. As much as we're complaining, we have to admit Microsoft is always, whether it be good or bad, ahead of the game on where the games industry is going. We gotta admit. This might be another one of those moments. Right. Like, so whoa. from the original inception of Xbox, people laugh. Why you got hard drive? Why you got Ethernet? Nobody's got Ethernet. Why are we gonna pay all this money for some goddamn Ethernet? Remember that? Oh, gee. Right? You was there, kid. 360, oh, 720p. Why are you pushing for all this? Why I gotta buy HD TV to, to do all yeah, this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, it was it was all these things. Oh, TV. Why I gotta why are you doing games and TV? Last of Us series now. Um, yo, spy camera, why you got connect? What Alexa, can you do Xbox always sets the trend on where it goes, whether you like it or not, people like it or not. They know where it's gonna go. The only issue with Xbox is whether they're too early yeah. to it and sometimes it, they gotta take the slugs and the arrows for everybody else to come to oh now it's cool to do tv tv <laughs> games oh now it's cool to do uh, cameras and, and like that's the thing and they may see a future where you know we just saw the court case where apple and um now you can put xbox cloud gaming the app on on um not no more browser the app on the apple device joint they won the case and the nvidia so if they see some future where things are going to be everywhere let's be honest who's best equipped with the way they're set up for to yeah, be yeah. everywhere versus everyone else yeah yeah microsoft there the, they are yeah. cloud game pass we have to admit that so if they see something the only issue is where i always go back to what addict said are you too soon and do you risk damaging your brand as a result of being the I'm the first yeah, dude to, kind of guy. To me, you you set up your brand where you can make the pivot on a, on a meeting. Like a meeting and one Friday night, you doing it Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, you, they're so concerned always with being first, they always put their they foot in their mouth. Right. I mean, it's, 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 you got to see how it's going to play out, right? I don't know, I don't man. Know. I feel like if the roles uh -oh. were reversed, the Xbox was like first and dominated places, it would actually probably makes sense right because mm -hmm. they, you can only do what but get more grow more right because it's like playstation it should be the ones like looking to, to xbox still got people to mm -hmm. reach within the console ecosystem playstation is pretty much capped out and they have to either try to they have that's why they keep reselling games and, and now trying to push the pc and trying to have a resurgence and stuff mm -hmm. like that so uh, they're 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 capped out i think Oh, man, what I wanted to say is that if this was a situation, I, I hope this is a situation where, you know, this is an industry thing and, like, I, I, I can't speak for Nintendo, but I this is a situation where I need PlayStation to follow suit. Yeah. And it's not because I want them to do it just to make Xbox look good. It's just, like, it's, like, bro, like, for the sake of me, for what's keeping me from, like, tossing mm -hmm. my Xbox out and and upgrade and just, just sticking with playstation mm -hmm. you know what i mean what's what's if, if you're going to do that now mm -hmm. i know obviously there's ecosystems there's like you know subscription game pass isn't uh mm -hmm. there yet so it, it's, it's it's not ideal but it's like 
I don't understand. Like, I still want to know when they, they're going to wait for springtime. So hopefully they get some news there. But my right. thing is, is like, all right, we'll be fine. What does that mean? We will be fine. What, what, yeah, what, what is mean? the, but oh, like we're doing this, but, but what? Clarify this. Um, yeah. I mean, what can be said? That's going to be one of the hardest marketing conversations to have to your base. Right. I, I agree. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't get to you. No, no, it's, it, and uh, again, I, that that will be a huge hit for the brand in the console um market i know that everybody look at it from like a bird's eye view and that is small uh but when you have social media i do believe that social media uh controls the market for console it, it, social media is so like mass and mm -hmm. influential on what people buy like xbox i think has this reputation of just not being good Right? right, right, and they're not doing anything to change that impression. Mm. You know what I mean? They're only worsening in it. So the more right. stuff you put out that talking points that tarnishes the brand, the worse mm. you are. Like the like the X like Xbox isn't selling. You know it's what I mean? Point. You know they're, they're they're not selling, and I feel like they're not doing anything about it they're not supporting i was like you guys make these decisions then you get in these boardroom meetings and cause and say well we were you know lower than expected uh, you think like <laughs> like, goes, yeah. like, <laughs> wh like like what did you do to to attempt uh, bolster the console yeah sales, right? like like you didn't do anything so Ooh. um I, I i don't like it man i don't like uh this is the the, 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 the worst thing for gaming and this crazy thing because i'm an xbox fan right was mm gaming going corporate corporate hands mm. being the gaming because it shifts everything I do it changes agree, everything. then you got a lot of people entering the industry they didn't care about the game yeah. they just cared about the money the games can produce mm. well, i mean that that's everything though you're never gonna have an industry grow that mm -hmm. doesn't have people money get its attention so mm -hmm. we can we can wish that it never happened but at the same time if it never happened you can make an argument that's a giant domino and have the most Deluxest games in existence never would have happened. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a big one. How they, how they gonna, how they gonna word this? What are we looking at? Spring Queen is coming outside. <laughs> yeah, right. The Queen's they take address. The first, they take the first I, I, quarter cr off. <laughs> it's crazy. What, what, what is technically a quarter? Like, uh, what is the spring mm -hmm. time? The, the oh, duration. The end of March. Do you think they do this in their June showcase? No, I think they got to do it before. They got to do it. Yeah, they got to do what? They, they, they got to rip the bandaid off, and then what they got to do is the only way this you pull this off is you show all these games that you got that we didn't know about to make try to get people to forget about these older games that you're thinking about bringing forward, and that's how they go. So, they let me ask it. you this, okay? Let's mm -hmm. say they do go full blown multiplayer eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, do you? I mean, third party. Right. But it's everything's timed. Like you two years. Like you want to wait? Wait. Do you that obviously that would hurt the Xbox brand. Right. But I do think if the games are good, yeah, they're gonna they sell it. Leave it pretty decently because gonna, if you have a game like Elder Scrolls Six coming out, you right. got a Valve coming out. Obviously, I would say Elder Scrolls Six is way right. higher on that scale. And they're really good games. Right. Most people that are looking forward to that probably would just cop an Xbox or buy it on PC. Yeah, they're gonna, I don't think wait in two years. They're going to make it as if on the Xbox platform, you are the premium guy by having Game Pass. You get it first. You get it two years first, or you get it one year first. And those guys get the older one, and you know, maybe they, that, help, that helps get them, make them excited for the new one if the new one is critically acclaimed. And that, that's what they're going to do. And they're going to be like, yo, we're the home of get Call of Duty. Yo, you could play it right now, right now. You're going to wait. I mean, obviously, Call of Duty is going to come out on other platforms at the same time. But it, it's making it seem like Game Pass is the seller. If Again, if they, the way they could, I'm still not agreeing with this, but the way they could spin it is they are going to say we are, in order to, to save Game Pass, right, th this allows the Game Pass to continue. And you guys get treated first. Look at all these exclusives we got for you. And then you don't know when they will get it and what titles they will get. They may get some, they may not get everything. The other thing we got to look at is, well, they already kind of broke the rule. Because I was going to say, is this, when C when CFDs already broke the rule about an Xbox game studio doing this, yeah. right? Because yeah. at first I was going to be like, well, maybe because it's Hi-Fi Rush, this is something that Bethesda and um, ABK is fighting for. Because we do know on record, 
Pete Hines was not feeling the exclusivity stuff with, 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 with Starfield or what have you. He was like, well, why are we doing this? And, and then they, he kind of got shut down when we saw those leaks about this is where it's going. So I don't know, because if one, here's the thing, last point, if one group or one studio sees that they can do multi-plat, but we can't, that creates a problem. That creates, because they'd be like, yo, how are you going to want us to make, meet these targets and all these sales, but you letting ABK do and Bethesda do what they want to do, what about us, little old Hellblade? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, it creates, so it's going to be interesting. It, they've got twofold, the messaging to us and the, and the messaging internally in the building. Team, yeah, yeah. And this is why it's a mess. It's like, I can't believe like, like I'm regretting the ABK deal. If they weren't like, like mm-hmm. I, I, I'm I almost too, regretting right? it. I was like, for all this, you guys could have bought a bunch Here's of other thing, fucking though, studios, I, what bro. What we'll like, say is if it wasn't for the ABK, they, their financials would have looked real shady this year. Worse, yeah. So there's an argument that Xbox might have just been, the whole division might have been shut down. The mm-hmm. ABK thing, because remember, People, I think it was Tom Warner or someone, someone made an article that said they heard from high sources that if the ABK deal didn't go through, the Xbox was a wrap. So maybe there was some truth in that. Maybe this was like, look, the console sales ain't doing the hardest. You know, Game Pass isn't growing to the degree that we wanted to. This ABK deal can give us revenue enough money where it justifies us staying in this. Right. No good point. And let's be honest, like we never would have thought it would have been blocked. What is it? Almost two years of litigation. They were planning with ABK done a year and a half, two years ago. So now you're behind on profits and money that you thought you was going to have. And that could also play a factor to the money people saying, yo, we got to get this bread. We behind. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting how they word this. Get ready. Queen is in spring. Yeah. <laughs> we going to learn. We will see, man. But uh, I will say one thing, even though I until I can and until it's irrelevant. But um, Xbox and MLB the Show Game Pass thing is still one of the most <laughs> like funniest things to ever happen. Like to get a first party game from PlayStation on your subscription service and it be the place to play it. Like it doesn't make sense how Sony has not done something to like counteract that. Like. Like really, MLB. this is what we doing. But MLB the show day one in Game Pass uh uh next month. Um yes. uh, I usually play a good four hours, get, earn like four hundred gamer score in a game <laughs> and not end up dropping it. But uh but Cognito, thank you uh, again for you know joining us this episode. We went a little bit longer than we usually go, but we still right on cue the hour to an hour and a half of a show. Uh so but Cog, thank you. I know you're Yo. busy, got a lot of podcasts, a lot of things to do. You're a busy man. Uh, you got appreciate anything you, you want to say before you, uh, we get out of yeah. here? No, much love, kid. I appreciate playing on Xbox, man. Y'all been rocking for a minute. Love the new format. Love the new setup and weapon wheel and all that. So that's that's dope. Um, keep doing what y'all doing. I love the synergy there. For me, y'all already know at Lord Cognito on Twitter. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day. Check us out on Sunday, which is tomorrow after this recording. <laughs> um, you know, one o'clock Eastern. We're gonna be talking about a lot of this stuff that broke on Planet Xbox today, as well as some other stuff. Yeah, also, I'm curious what the hell Keith says tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be interesting tomorrow in the realm. We gonna see. So you got that, and then obviously shout out to again for another Xbox uh, Xbox centric podcast with the Fighting Duke, my man, Mister Maddie Plays. Go check that out. And also support lordsofgaming.net man we need y'all support trying to do some big things PAX E some good stuff some live shows we got going on with IOP and um, yeah man appreciate it appreciate it big time and it's always good to to chop it up with you it's been a minute since I've chopped it up playing Xbox with y'all absolutely appreciate it Attic I appreciate we're coming through it was a pretty satisfying show appreciate you you coming through yeah I I do (laughs) it's like look at the end of the day Nothing anyone says is factual. Like we 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 don't know what it's like to run a multi-trillion dollar company. But well, what I don't like is this is this energy I see on Twitter where it's like we don't even want you speaking about it. Yeah, Ooh. shut up. I, I, I at the end of the day, I'm gonna use my platform to speak against the stuff that I don't agree with. I don't agree with Xbox putting all these games, high fi rush and all of them on on you know PlayStation and stuff. So I'm gonna use my platform. And people was like, well, let's just wait for the official announcement. Um, how are they going to p- fix something or pivot if I wait till they add now till the game's done? 
Like, Ooh. no, like if we just sat around wait, waiting for the official announcement, then it's too late. There's no going back. You know, mm. nothing that any of us could do could, probably couldn't change the mindset. But it's mm. just like, I'd be damned if you got, I put it on Twitter. I got a lot of shit for it. You know what's worse what? than, uh, than an Xbox going third party smooth? Be one of the people that didn't say shit about it when it was mm. rumored to be going third party. Yeah. Just sat there waiting for Xbox to confirm shit. When has Xbox ever been transparent about anything half the time? Mm, to your they, point. They said yeah. one thing on Monday, and then someone else from their company says the exact opposite on Wednesday. Like, <laughs> I mean, Games, Games with Gold got reversed when Public Up Outcry came out. Remember when they tried to pull that Games with Gold? You never know. To act for it, maybe, maybe the team that lost is hoping for, for the, yeah, the hoping, hardcore yeah. to say, yo, this ain't it. And maybe they get enough pushback that they start thinking about not doing that. Is yeah, that think, is very I think accurate. The day, the day they announced this, all twenty five million Game Pass subscribers should unsubscribe, <laughs> and, and, and then they'll reverse that decision quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be oh, fun. Man, Just please don't funny. make videos of you destroy your 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 consoles and stuff. You already gave them the money. Like what don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. man, but we appreciate you guys tuning into Weapon Will podcast uh, this Sunday. Uh, Patreons, thank you for making this show possible. Cognito, thank you for coming through. Attic, thank you for your constant uh, attendance. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. Peace.